to this worship service for Sunday, December 20th. I'm so happy you could find some time to be with us. We'll begin with a couple of announcements. Many, many thanks to everyone who donated diapers for our diaper drive for the Maker's Place. We have so many, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it in my car. So thank you, thank you for your generosity. I'm gonna count them all up and I'll let you know how many we donated next week. Our Christmas Eve service is coming just around the corner. At 4.30 on Christmas Eve afternoon, we'll have a brief outdoor worship service on our newly renovated steps. We hope that you, we can join us. But if it's too cold, just stay at home and we'll have a virtual Lessons and Carol service coming your way. And now, let us worship God. Long ago, at various times and in various ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the Hebrew prophets. But in these last days, we have heard God's voice through his Son, Jesus Christ who has been given dominion over all things and through whom all things were made. He is the one who sustains the universe, the one who gave himself up to free us from the grip of sin and death. The one who even now reigns in the heavens and is seated at the right hand of God. This is our God. Let us worship God together as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Today, we light the candle of love. Scripture tells us, and now these three, faith, hope, and love abide. But the greatest of these is love. When all else fails, love abides. When everything else falls away, love remains. It remains with us now and will remain with us until the end of time. As we watch and we wait for Jesus coming, let us place our trust in the perfect and perfecting love of God. Let us pray. Ever-living and ever-loving God, thank you for loving us first. Thank you for choosing us, each one of us, again and again and again. Help us to turn to you so that your perfect love might animate our lives when our own feels insufficient, so that we might reach out and minister to a hurting world. We ask this. In the name of your love made flesh. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1 and also chapter 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, who he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he has made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who was unable to sympathize with us in our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we might receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that come to our hearts be good and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. if your boss really knows what they're doing. Like they tell you to do something and you wonder, is it wise or is it even possible or practical for you to do it? This can happen, right? This happens all the time. We all know principals of schools who have done very little actual teaching. They got their degrees in administration and they were catapulted to the role of principal. They don't know what it's like to teach for decades. They don't know the impact of transitioning from one curriculum to another on the teachers and on the students and how much disruption it's going to cause. We see this played out all the time in many occupations. The engineer doesn't understand the real nuts and bolts that it takes to take a, like a plan into a building. And their timeline and their proposals are unrealistic. The postmaster general doesn't know what it's like to sort thousands of pieces of mail and deliver them in a timely fashion in all sorts of weather because they haven't done it. We trust, we tend to trust more 
those who we know have been in our shoes. And that, I believe, is one of the things that makes Jesus so interesting and so important. We don't just have a God who is sympathetic to our human condition. We worship a God who has experienced all that in himself. That's the point that Hebrews is trying to help us understand as we talk today about Jesus as Emmanuel. We're going to talk a little bit about what that really means for our lives. And Hebrews helps us to do that. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. We have one who in every respect has been tested just as we are. Because Jesus came to us, as a human. He wasn't appearing to be human or pretending to be human. Jesus was born of Mary, a human child. In Jesus, God takes all that it means to be human into God's self. Jesus has experienced everything that we have. Remember that he fasted for 40 days in the desert, so he knows what it's like to be hangry. To be so hungry that you're actually angry. He knows what it's like to lose a loved one. To be misunderstood. To be tempted to drink too much. He knows what it's like to feel the sting of rejection. He knows what it's like to suffer. And even to feel like you've been abandoned by God. He has been tested in every way that we are. So when we say that Jesus is Emmanuel, it points us to that moment, to that God entered our world and met humankind in a new and intimate way in Jesus Christ. Because of the incarnation, God truly knows our suffering. God has walked a mile in our shoes in Jesus. And that's what I think makes Christianity so unique. For when we pray, we're not praying to a God who cares about our suffering. We pray to a God who knows. A God who knows our suffering, who took it on and carried it into himself. The incarnation means, Emmanuel, God with us means, that when we pray, we pray to a God who knows. Not just someone who's sympathetic, but someone who knows. And that makes all the difference. Advent is a season where we are honest. Honest with ourselves and honest with God about the darkness in our lives and in our world. As we wait on Christ to come, we are careful in naming the places where we need help. Help for ourselves and help for the world. And there's a lot that we might want to name this year. We're afraid, we are disappointed. Some of us are grieving, and all of us wonder what the future holds. And sometimes, just to make it through the day to day and get on with the things that we have to do, we kind of want to push all that down and push it away from us. But God knows. God knows what it is we're carrying this year. And transformation happens. Healing begins when we bring it honestly to our God and then ask for God's help to help us find the life that exists, the life that exists for us on the other side of our fear, our disappointment, our sorrow. God knows our feelings, our fears, our temptations, and our trials. God has experienced it in himself. And that means that with one person in our lives, we don't have to pretend. We don't have to pretend with God. Instead, when we feel like we're struggling, we grab onto the hand of the one who's been there and we say, I cannot get to the other side of this without you. Please help me. 
And because Jesus has walked this way before, he can and he does. He holds on to our hand and leads us through the darkest valleys, and when it feels like it's all too much to bear, he gives us rest beside the still waters. This has been a hard year. I don't care who you are. Everyone has had a hard year, and we all want to jump right into Christ's coming, new hope and promises fulfilled and new beginnings. But the season of Advent invites us to wait and to take a moment to be honest about where it is that we're looking for God. And so I invite you to do that this week, to name and notice the places where you're looking for God's help and God's mercy and strength. So take a time this week. It might be right after this service. It might be in the morning when you do your devotions. I invite you this week to take time to ask for God's help for yourself and for the world. It might be five minutes, maybe ten, maybe just one minute. But let's name before God what's on our hearts. Let's name it to the one who knows, to the one who has experienced our sorrows and our sufferings, so that we might find the grace and the mercy and the help that we need and find life on the other side. When we pray, we pray to a God who knows. Thanks be to God for this amazing gift. Amen. O come, would you pray with me? O come, O come, Emmanuel, let us see you, let us feel you with us. Help us face our fears and our discouragement and lead us through to the other side. And then by your mercy and grace, grant that we might do the same for others. Amen. We believe that God is with us. And somehow, God is revealed in us. Let us marvel at this mystery as we listen to the hymn, Emmanuel. Thank you that we have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses and who now stands before the throne of grace, interceding on our behalf. And so we bring our prayers before you with confidence, seeking your mercy and your grace. Oh God, we pray for all who are suffering today, those who are sick with the coronavirus, those who wait in quarantine, those who are sick and tired of social distancing and the isolation that it brings. We pray for those who work tirelessly to beat back death and worry that they are losing the battle. We pray for those who worry about bringing home the illness to their families and for those who have lost work or lost income this year. We pray for those who worry about feeding their families, paying the bills, and putting presents under the tree. And we pray for those who mourn. 
Lord, you know that there is always more hurt in our world than we can name. But this year, we feel it in our very bones. And so we pray that you would bind up the brokenhearted. And Lord, that's really all of us this year. Please mend that within us that needs mending. And fill our hearts with your love and light. Give us mercy and grace and help so that we might find a joy on the other side of our sorrows and struggles. This we pray together as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God entered into our world, bringing light and life. God has richly blessed us. Let us continue to show our thanks to God by giving of ourselves and our offerings. You can send in a check to our P.O. box. You can give online through the Greater New Jersey website. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. sharing of yourself with us. We ask that you would bless us and all that we offer back to you and use it so that more might know of your goodness, your mercy, and your healing love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus is here, right here with you, nearer than your next breath. The power and presence of God entered our world more than 2,000 years ago, and it has never left. Let us lift our hearts and sing with the angels.
of your day. Go forth with courage, with hope, and with joy. For the Lord God, Emmanuel, is there with you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit are with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>